Good afternoon, National Apartment Association exhibitors. It's been said that what gets measured gets done. Not only what gets measured gets done, but it gets improved. So if you're looking to improve your exhibiting ROI, one of the fastest ways you can do that is to develop a measurement and reporting system. Welcome to Driving Exhibiting ROI. Over the next 45 minutes, I'm going to take you on a fast and furious journey on how to set up a exhibit measurement system so you can improve your exhibiting results and your return on investment. The National Apartment Association is absolutely committed to your success as exhibitors, and that's why they provide not only this webinar, but a complete online exhibitor resource center where you and your entire team have 24-7, 365 day free access to live webinars like this and a series of replayable webinars, a complete series of how-to exhibiting articles, a downloadable exhibiting cost control and ROI tool, and at any time uh, when you're on the Exhibitor Resource Center, you can submit questions via Ask the Trade Show Expert email Q&A. Make sure you bookmark this site share it with everybody on your team and visit often as we're continually updating this site to help you have access to the latest and best thinking on how to make trade shows pay off. Here's a screenshot of what the page looks like. Many of you may be familiar with me. My name is Jefferson Davis. I've been around the NAA show for four years now. I've been around trade shows for 27 years. And like all of you, I've spent a lot of time executing shows. And for me, a trade show was never a place to just show up, fly the company flag, hand out some tchotchkes, and go home. I was always in a position where I had to make every dollar an hour do the work at 10. So I started studying back in 1988, started studying intensely trade shows, trying to develop what are the strategic things that companies who do really well at shows what do they do consistently? And I've organized those into a set of processes and perspectives that have helped my clients generate combined over a half a billion dollars in show results. So if you ever want to talk shows, call me, 800-700-6174, uh, or drop me an email, jefferson at tradejoeturnaround.com. So let's get started into the subject matter of today's session. Okay. An exhibit program, what should it do when it's working and working well? Well, I believe an effective exhibit program should do two very specific things. Number one, it should visibly and directly support your company's core business objectives. And second, the program should deliver visible value beyond cost measurably value beyond cost measurably over time or return on investment. So that's what this webinar is all about today. For, for too many exhibitors, in my experience over the years, for too many exhibitors, the, the spend outweighs the results. Many exhibitors know what they spent, but they're not real clear about what they've got, and they often have a hard time linking the results back to the show to be able to show that the exhibit program is working. And so over this entire series of webinars and articles and everything we've been doing, uh, that's what this is about, trying to um, give you the content to shift this scale so the results heavily outweigh the spend. Okay, And I promise you, um, no matter how big your company, no matter how long you've been exhibiting, that you can get a significant ROI and the chances are good that you're probably just kind of picking the low-lying fruit, the low-hanging fruit right now. So let's, let's do a quick poll here since we're on the topic of return on investment. Uh, what I want to find out is, uh, as an individual, how satisfied is your company with the return, with the results, and the ROI that you feel you're getting from trade shows right now. Uh, you, very satisfied, you're thrilled, you're satisfied. Hey, it's, you know, it's good, it's okay. Somewhat, you're kind of in that somewhat range, or maybe toward the bottom of the scale, you're really not satisfied at all. So go ahead, take a moment, 
and click the radio dial button that best applies. And by the way, this is a confidential survey. I cannot see your individual score, so feel free to let it hang out here. Okay. I'll give you just another moment. We're at about 76-78% um, of uh, you have voted. Again, I can't see your individuals. I can only see percentage. And I'll show you. Okay, we're at close to 90%. Thank you so much. I'm going to flash the results just so you can see. Okay, so you can see that the majority of uh, the group on, on today's webcast are in that somewhat satisfied range. Um, you know, 61% of us are in that somewhat. Uh, for those of you that selected that category, again, um, getting these measurements in place are going to help you. Many of you are getting a lot better results than you're actually seeing, but because you don't have a measurement system in place, you can't track it. So those of you in the somewhat, this is going to help you raise to the very, to the satisfied. Those of you that are in the satisfied range, hopefully this is going to put you all the way up in the very. And those of you that are in the not satisfied range, not only will the content in today's webcast be beneficial in setting your measurements in place, but it's also going the entire content on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, I strongly encourage you to go back and look at any and all of that content, because there's a lot of practical how-to on how to get there. Okay, so let's talk about ROI, prime the mental pump here. Uh, first of all, do you believe that it can be measured? There are some people running around out there saying it's not possible to measure trade chart ROI. Are you in that camp? Uh, because if you don't believe it can be measured, uh, then you're probably not going to do much with it. And if you do believe it can be measured, do you measure now? Okay. And if you say, yeah, we do measure, uh, what, what, what metrics or what things do you measure? How do you measure ROI? And then finally, here's a really big question and targeted really for everybody, but specifically the 21% who said you're not satisfied or in that somewhat. What factors do you feel are most limiting your company's ability to get return on investment? So these are some good questions to think about and kind of start priming the mental pump, if you will, here on this whole topic of exhibiting ROI. So let's talk about some prerequisites here, okay? If we're going to measure ROI, some things that we've got to try to get into play here, okay? First is that we've got to come develop what I like to call a get from versus a get through perspective. Many uh, exhibit managers are doing, managing so many shows, and it's all they can do to get the space booth, people, product, there, in, up, down, out, and back. And it's really it, uh, just we're doing as much as we feel we can do or think we can do to get through the show. Okay, so the key, key word here is, the key phrase is get from. Okay, remember the two things your exhibit program should do. Second is you've got to view your exhibiting program not as an expense, but as an investment. Because I promise you this, however you see this thing called exhibiting. If you see it as making expensive appearances, I guarantee you, you will be making expensive appearances. But if you'll step back and view it as a marketing, as a sales, as a customer relationship management investment, okay, that will start to set the table up for what? Return. If you're making an investment, you're going to demand return. Okay? And so we're going to talk about where and, where and how to find that. The third prerequisite is um, you've got to get, get out of the logistics trap. You know, the average exhibitor is spending 95% of their pre-show time on logistics and operations. And those are the things I talked about before. Get the space, get the booth, get the product, get the literature, get the staff, get it shipped to the city, get it into the hall, get it set up, get it torn down, send it home, and do all, do all that on time and on budget. You know, and they're thinking that's kind of like, uh, you know, going to deliver ROI. Not really. That's only going to guarantee that your stuff and your people get there. And then finally, uh, so the fourth prerequisite is you've got to invest more time in the critical success factors of outcomes, attraction, experience, managing the experience, and follow through and measurement. Those are the 
four, five big areas, outcomes, attraction, experience, follow through, and measurement. And by the way, we've got content, deep content, on all those topics on the NAA Exhibitor Resource Center. So to go deeper on those, I'm going to take you in a few of them today, but to, for deep dives, make sure you're going back there. Okay, so measuring, why? Okay, why, why should we measure? Well, I tell you this. If anybody in your company is questioning the value of exhibiting, why are we exhibiting? Why are we spending all this money? Why are we sending all these people? Why are we doing this? You need to be measuring. Okay? If um, you've you got senior management coming demanding justification, you need to be measuring. If you want to learn how your program and your investment is performing, and you want to kind of pinpoint or spotlight where to focus your efforts to improve, you need to measure. And the, the top reason that I haven't mentioned yet is to improve your value in the organization. As uh, one of the guys on my team calls it, get a bigger seat at the budgeting table. When your boss sees you as somebody who's not taking this budget and spending it, but taking this budget and investing it to the highest and best use and bringing back the measurements and the recon, to show, tell, and prove that it's supporting core business objectives and delivering value, your value in the organization goes way up. I'm talking pay raises, promotions, bonuses. If you're publicly held, maybe stock options. Um, so to improve your value in the organization. Now, there's a lot of benefits of measuring, and I'm not going to go down these, but uh, you know, should you be exhibiting or at what level in this show? Measurement can help. You want to figure out the strengths of your program? Measurement will spotlight. You, you, you want to know where your blind spots are, where your, where your gaps, where your weaknesses are? Measurement will spotlight it. You want to set up some benchmarks? Maybe you're doing so many shows that you're just running from show to show to show, and you've got no measurement in place. And maybe the best thing that you could do is set a measurement program in place so you can take some of these underperforming shows off of your calendar to free up time and resources to do the better shows, like NAA, you know, more effectively, setting up a scorecard so you can weed out your underperforming shows. Okay, so a lot of benefits of, um, of measuring. So let's talk money a little bit here. Okay, we'll get into the financial side, some little high points on budgeting uh, for your exhibiting program. Uh, today, zero-based budgeting, uh, most companies are looking at each line item on their uh, trade show um, program. And they're asking, what goals is this supporting, and where and how is this delivering value? And if, it's, and if they can't link it to a clear-cut goal, and they can't uh, find a, a way where they're getting value beyond cost, they'll start reducing or downsizing the spend in that area. Okay, the trade show budgeting rule of thumb, just as a very round starting point, is floor space times three to five. Okay. So if you're, you know, if you're in a single booth and the cost of the floor space is $4,000, then your minimum show budget should be $12,000 to $18,000 or $20,000, I'm sorry, so twelve dollars to $20,000. So that's just a starting point, and that will give you enough resources so you can do the right things to make the exhibit program work. So remember your rule of thumb? Uh, the two areas, I'm going to show you where the dollar goes in a moment. But if you want to know the two smart areas to budget more, it's in driving the right visitors to your booth, number one. And that means your pre and your at show marketing. And second is delivering a quality visitor experience. So that means your exhibit, your product service presentation, your staff. Those areas would be where the smart money is going to invest more Okay, from a budgeting standpoint. There's a, another technique. It's a bit high level, um, but I'm going to take a very just a real quick swing at it. Uh, smart companies today, rather than saying, "Well, we allocate 10% of our revenue to marketing, or we allocate 20% of our annual marketing budget to exhibits," what they're doing is they're looking at what the value of a single customer within this audience is, and then they're budgeting a percentage or dollar amount of that value. Case in point, if a customer was worth $25,000 to you, 
then you might be deciding that we are willing to spend or invest up to $250 per market per profile match. Then they're setting a total show budget based on the number of people in the show audience that match their profile multiplied by the allowable marketing cost per profile match. Again, this is a deeper topic. Uh, this is something I'm going to put an article out on very shortly because I get a lot of questions on this. And this is a way to really slant the playing field your way. And this is not a function of how small or how large you are. In fact, oftentimes, small companies that are using the allowable marketing cost strategy can actually get a bigger share of mind of their target audience than companies who are just using you know, 10% of um, marketing budget or 30% of the, um, you know, goes to trade shows. So it's a different way of thinking about marketing. A lot of leverage in it. A lot of power in it. Okay? So, where does a dollar go? Well, the latest research finds that the average company today allocates 40.3% of their annual marketing budget is being allocated toward event and exhibit marketing. So almost four out of ten marketing dollars are being invested in the exhibits and events. And within that investment, there are nine major areas where the dollar is going. You'll see it on the screen right now. Floor space is accounting on average for 36%. Hence, the budgeting rule of three to five. Okay, then show services are coming in second. Then travel and entertainment, which for many companies doesn't even really show up in their trade show budget. You've got sales teams or departments who are managing their travel and entertainment out of their accounts and it's not even showing up sometimes. And then you move into the exhibit itself, taking up 11%. Uh, material handling, shipping, freight at 10% of budget. Then you move down into promotion, only 6%. 4% to lead management, 1% to staff training, 1% to other. This is good stuff to know. This is the latest research. So the question is, are you tracking your trade show investment by the nine major areas? If you're not, okay, I mentioned earlier that we've built a complementary tool. It's called a cost control and ROI calculator, and you can download it on the Exhibitor Resource Center, and it's got a sample budget completely built. It's got the benchmarks. It'll auto benchmark. It'll show you exactly where the dollar is going. And here's the thing, okay, with tracking. Now, if you're above or below, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. But what it does mean is that a light should flash for you saying, hey, let me take a look here. Case in point, if the average exhibitor is allocating 6% of their dollar toward promoting their exhibit, and you're only over at 2%, or 3%, I think you need to take a look over there. Because again, I don't even think 6% is enough of the budget. I, I recommend we be at 15% of our promotion budget toward getting in the mind on the agenda of the right people. And by the way, we talk about that in detail in other webinars on the Resource Center. And remember the other area where I said to ratchet up your investment is in your exhibit experience, which would show up on the red slice over here at 11%. So again, Track, know where your dollar goes by major area, benchmark it to the averages. If you're way above or way below, look under the hood. And there's a great tool here uh, to download it if you haven't already done so. Okay? All right, so, uh, talk about some ways to save money here since we're in the money game. Uh, number one, read the kit. Okay? Missing a deadline on average increases the uh, cost by 30%. Okay, so do as much advance ordering as you can. Keep an eye on show labor. Sometimes you can control it. Sometimes you can't, but try to be on straight time. Uh, have as much done to your exhibit before it gets before it's packed and shipped. You know, the less they have to assemble, the more you can have pre-assembled in the crate, the better. Uh, number your crates according to content. Uh, you know, to keep those I and D costs down, and have a diagram and give very specific instructions on how to set it up along with your electrical requirements and your repacking. You're doing a lot of shows. Hopefully, you're using the same freight carrier. Hopefully, you're also negotiating some volume discount. And number seven, uh, take advantage of bundles and packages, specifically marketing packages when they're available. 
These are just a scratching the surface. Uh, there's content up on the Resource Center to give you a lot more ideas on saving money. So take a peek. All right, let's do a quick uh, second poll here. I, I want to find out as a group, um, does your company set specific measurable goals for trade shows? Or do you have reasons, you know, kind of get some leads, branding, awareness, educate the market, positioning, differentiation, you've got reasons. Or maybe not really at all, you know, you just kind of, you know, we're, you know, when I ask why do you exhibit, you would tell me, well, we're in the industry, we're expected to be there. What would the competition say if we weren't there? Okay, so whatever area you fall in here, we're at about 70%. I'll give you just a moment, and then I'll flash the results here. Okay, we're over 70. Here we go. For the sake of time, i got a lot to cover in a short period here with you. Let me share the results. Only 4% of exhibitors on this webcast are said, yes, we set specific measurable goals. Okay, people ask me all the time, they go, Jefferson, what is the single most important thing that I could do to start getting better value and better ROI from shows? And I'll tell you right now, it is to begin with the end in mind. Okay, know exactly what success looks like at some point down the line and work backwards from that goal. So I want to take you through a very quick um briefing on how to set exhibiting goals that lead to ROI. Okay, 76% of exhibitors set no specific goals. That's according to an Exhibitor Magazine survey. And by the way, the average readership of Exhibitor Magazine has an annual trade show budget of over $600,000. Uh, there's a lot of expensive appearances happening because we're not setting specific goals. See, all of you have reasons. I know this. If I were to ask any one of you, why do you exhibit, I'll guarantee you can give me two or three reasons. But reasons are not enough. Okay? You've got to take reasons like leads and branding and educate and awareness and meet with customers and introduce a new product. And you've got to convert them to what we call a smart goal. And then you've got to back it that somebody's got to put the hat on and plan, how are we going to do that? And there needs to be a written action plan outlining the goals, the steps, and everything that has to happen. So if you were in that somewhat or not really area and you're on this webinar because you want to improve your exhibiting ROI, I'm telling you the best thing you can do right now is run this process right up on the screen. Start with your reasons, convert them to goals, back them up with written action plans, communicate to every and anybody on your team, execute around the plan, measure pre add and post, uh, and then rinse and reuse for your next show. That's the process of exhibiting by objectives. I think there's only two ways we exhibit. We either exhibit by objectives, which is this, or we exhibit by hope. We rent space, we show up, and we hope. And I tell you what, if you're not getting ROI and you're not very satisfied with the results you're getting, here's your starting point. Okay? So, step one in this process is to identify your business units, departments, and your key stakeholders in those departments. Ask them what goals they are currently trying to accomplish and how can we better use the show to support the goal. Okay? Here's one of the best questions that you could ask. Write this down. When the doors close on the NAA Educational Conference and Exposition, when the doors close, 90, 180 days after the show, how will we know we succeeded? If you will draft a very clear answer for the different departments, from the marketing department to the sales department to the customer relationship management department, maybe other departments, the financial department, the human resources department, the product development, the R&D departments, Okay, when the doors close, 90, 180 days after the show, how will we know we succeeded? Uh, that is the major question. Okay, then what will come from this type of questioning is clarification on your top 
reasons for exhibiting. Now, take a look on the screen. Okay, I want you very quickly to grab what you believe to be your top three reasons. Pick, pick one sales, at least one. Pick one marketing, and pick one relationship. Now, again, these are reasons, but this is where you start. Do you have a product or service that's physically expensive, time-consuming to demonstrate? Is that what this is about, physical demos? Is it about lead generation? Do you need an infusion of quality, qualified sales leads? Many of you sell multiple products, multiple services, but your customers are only buying one of those. They're buying what you sell from somebody else, so maybe cross-selling is the strategy for you. Okay, introducing. Hey, you got a new product, service to introduce? No better place to do it. You're trying to differentiate brand or position your company? Can't think of a better way to do it. Relationships, customers. You have customers that you're not getting a lot of face time with that you could be using the show to better do? Tremendous use. Cross-promoting with other exhibitors who have your customers already could be a fabulous reason. What I want you to do then is, is pick that your top three reasons for exhibiting, and then here's where we put the rubber to the road, convert it to a SMART goal. Specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, time-bound. Here's an example, lead generation. By closing time, we will capture at least 50 qualified leads. That meets the criteria perfect. New product introduction. During the show, we will show, tell, demonstrate, and get feedback on our new product from at least 200, whatever, uh, customer acquisition. Within six months of closing time, we will have opened at least 10 new accounts. See where we're going with this. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic time. If I stop this webinar now and said I'm giving you nothing else, but you took the time to sit down and take your top three reasons, convert them to goals, you would be now put yourself in the top 20% of exhibitors in America and the, just from our sample on this webcast in the top 4% of exhibitors in this show. Now, you got to take that goal. You can't just stop there, right? You can't just go, okay, I got the goal. Uh, remember, every goal needs a planner and a plan, so you've got to create your written action plan. You will see the seven elements of it outlined in your workbook. It's the statement of the goal. It is a strategy statement. It is a list of actions or tactics detailing who is involved in each act action, uh, a budget for time, a budget for money, and setting up your measurement checkpoints. When do you check on each of these actions? And in step five, you schedule it, communicate, you execute around, you monitor activity, and you finally measure the results. That's the process of exhibiting by objectives. You either exhibit by objectives or you exhibit by hope. Okay, these five steps are absolute game changers. I've applied them with my clients to the tune of over a half a billion dollars in combined results. They work when you work the process. Okay, so maybe a question has flashed in your mind about this driving ROI, and if you're going to get ROI, you're going to have to have goals and a plan. Okay, this would be a good time to go ahead and maybe submit uh, the question. I'm going to keep uh, powering forward because i got much to cover here. What I'm going to take you into now is into the science of measuring. I'm going to give you performance metrics that are both performance-based and financial performance metrics. Um, so grab your calculator, grab your pen. I'm going to go through these very quickly, but I'll detail them out as best I can. Here we go. Okay. Trade shows are about face. You have a finite amount of capacity for face-to-face -face interaction. I think you should calculate it. I think you should know it for a million reasons. Okay, let me give you the formula. It's very simple. You take the number of exhibiting hours in the show, you multiply it by the number of full-time staff that will be in your booth on average for all those hours, then you multiply that by a target number of interactions per hour per staffer. In this example, Okay, we've got almost nine exhibiting hours. I have two staffers. I'm in a small booth, 10 by 10. I'm going to go on the moderate at four interactions per hour. Conservative, three interactions per hour. Aggressive, 
five interactions per hour per staffer. Okay. Now you have got one of the most important numbers that you will ever understand about exhibiting. Trade shows are about face. Given these dynamics, I have the capacity for 70 face-to-face, one-to-one interactions in my exhibit. If I don't like the number, what are the variables? Can I change the number of hours in the show? No. They're set. Can I change the number of exhibit staff? Within reason. Staffing rule of thumb, 50 square feet per staffer. You tell me you're going to put four booth staff in a 10 by 10 booth, I'm telling you you're going to have a problem, colossal problem, called too many staff and not enough space for attendees. Okay, so make sure you have the right number. Your interactions per hour, three conservative, four moderate, five aggressive. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to calculate your exhibit interaction capacity for the upcoming show. And by the way, if you haven't viewed our webcast on driving qualified booth traffic, guess what the goal now, a, a, a smart goal emerges. Identify and attract at least 70 of the best possible visitors to our booth. There's another smart goal. Okay, interaction capacity, first one. Now, this measurement is going to tell you how well did you utilize or take advantage of the show opportunity. We call it exhibit interaction capacity slash utilization. So in this example, I can track 50 interactions in my booth. I had a capacity for 70. I utilized 71% of my interaction capacity. Did I do good? Did I do bad? Well, it depends on what you're looking at. Your target is to utilize 80 to 100% of your interaction capacity. So in this example, I need to do some looking under the hoods. See how I can start like checking now? My first question is, were there at least 70 of the right people that attended the show? What did I do pre-show to market to them? Uh, did my exhibit work? And when they walked by it, did it grab attention? Did it communicate what I did? If I'm under the 80% range, I've got to look, take a little look under the hood here. This is a performance metric. How much of your interaction capacity did you utilize? You now have some science. Okay. Next, exhibit attraction efficiency, which is a little more sophisticated, takes a little more digging, but totally worth the time to understand. So I had 50 interactions through my exhibit. When I analyzed the show audience, I found that there were 200 people, job function title, type of company, geography, dead ringer matches with what I'm calling my ideal customer profile. In this example, I was able to attract and interact with 25% of my target audience. Is that good? Is it bad? Depends. Exhibit Surveys, who's been uh, researching this since 1963, has a benchmark at 45% of the studies, surveys, quantitative, qualitative, they found the, uh, the average exhibitor can attract and interact with 45%. If you're below the 45% benchmark, you've got some areas for improvement. How do you attract more people to your exhibit? targeted pre-marketing, and an effective exhibit design, a good in-booth experience, and a well-trained and prepared booth staff. Exhibit attraction efficiency. Let's talk money here. Okay, Trade shows are about face. Here's the question. Can you put a cost on face-to-face -face contact? Answer, you better believe. Here's how we do it. Take your total show investment, in this example, small booth, Right, $10,000 investment. I had 50 interactions throughout the exhibit. Divide the two, and I have got my cost per interaction. Question, is that good? Is it bad? Is it high? Is it low? Well, average cost of a field sales call in North America is $596. Um, I would say I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, the customers come to me, open mind on my turf. I'm bringing in a face-to-face -face interaction for significantly less than the cost of generating it in the field. That is a good CPI. 
Many of you listening in small 10 by 10 booths here today uh, are going to be in the area of 40 to 70 or 80 dollars if you're doing this right. Okay? Measure cost per interaction, compare it across all your shows. In one show, your cost per interaction is $200. In another show, it's almost $900. The light bulb's flashing. Take a look at that $900. Try to figure out what's going down. Cost per interaction. Simple formula to calculate. Great way to understand and justify the spend. Cost per lead. Simple formula, right? Total show investment divided by the number of leads you captured. You have got a cost per lead. Okay, now why is this number important? Why should you care about cost per lead? Well, again, if you're doing a lot of shows, you would definitely want to be tracking your, your uh, cost per lead across the portfolio. Wow, it was $1,487 in this show and it was $286 over here. You know what else you want to compare cost per lead to? Uh, the average trade show cost per lead which is $360. You know what else you want to compare it to? Your average sale amount. Just for a very rough example to build upon what's on the screen here. If you had an average sale amount of $1,000 and your cost per lead was $286, is that good? Is that bad? Is that a problem? <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's a big problem. You know why? 28.6% of your revenue will be devoured by your lead acquisition cost. So you want to be comparing cost per lead across your show portfolio compared to the average cost of a B2B trade show lead, compared to your average unit of sale, and also compared to other lead generation media that you're using in your company. So you can track cost per lead. Simple formula to run, easy to run, Amazing how few exhibitors are running these formulas. Next thing, lead goals, quantity, and quality. And we've got a complete webinar on this topic that you've got to take a peek at. Okay? So I set a lead goal of 50 qualified leads. I captured 35. I achieved 70% of my lead goal. 45% of those were A leads. 40% were B leads and 15% were C leads. What am I tracking? My goal, my actual, and my breakdown by quality, A, B, C. And by the way, in this webinar, we show you how to set up a, a uh, grading matrix. So when you call it an A, it's not because they were excited and they could fog a mirror. <laughs> it's because they lined up on three criteria. A B lead lined up on two out of three, and a C lead lined up on one out of three of your most important criteria. So, so if you don't have a scoring grading matrix set up, you've got to view that webinar. Okay? Next, here's a really great way to show value received from a show. The potential value of your leads. So let's say that you captured 50 leads and your average sale amount was fifty thousand I'm sorry, five thousand dollars. Multiply the two together and you have generated $250,000 of potential revenue for your company. Potential revenue. Divide that by your show investment and look at this. I can already get to a soft dollar ROI. For every dollar we invested in the NAA Expo, I, I generated $25 of potential sales volume or value. Pretty good stuff. Many exhibit managers today, you know, if you can't close the loop on your leads, um, for many of us, this might be the best that we can do to show senior management that, the, that we are delivering value for the company. 25 to 1 soft dollar ROI. So that moves us to a topic of ROI, our, our final piece of the puzzle here as we begin to wind down, okay? Good. Dollar in, dollar back. It's better than losing a dollar, right? I mean, if you gave me a dollar, I put it in my pocket and walked away, that doesn't feel good. But if you gave me that dollar and I handed you your dollar back, you'd be, well, I guess it's better than losing it, right? Better? Three to five. Dollar in, three to five dollars back measurably over time. Best? High as you can go.
as high as you can go. I've had clients over the years that generate in hard dollar gross margin ROI, $40, $45 to one, every dollar put in. So you want to pick a target. If you're at zero ROI, maybe just getting one to one is your starting point. But I would be targeting the three to five, and as fast as I hit that five range, I would be pressing as high as I can go on a per show basis. Okay, ROI. So how do you measure the, the all-elusive ROI? Well, first you understand there's two types. There's hard dollar, which is cash in the bank, checks. And we can credit it in full or in part to the show. It's typically going to come from either at show deals closed or post show sales closed. And we could split it in just top line revenue if you want to keep it real easy, or we could actually drill down to gross margin revenue. Then soft dollar ROI. If you have a independent sales team, if you sell through dealers or distributors, if you are never going to be able to close the loop on your leads, you're, they're just not going to report, it's never going to happen. For you, soft dollar ROI might be the only way that you can finally get some form of a return on investment measurement in play here. Okay, now soft dollar is value received that you can express in numeric t terms. It's typically some form of savings. If you got something for less than you would have otherwise had to pay, did you deliver value for your company, yes or no? Answer, yes. Okay, so let me show you the hard dollar formula here. Okay, so here's the example. Okay, so it's nine months after the show. I can trace $200,000 in sales revenue back to the show. I'm going to go ahead and use the gross margin formula, so I'm going to back out. I have an 80% cost of sale. Okay, 80% cost of sale, so, or, or a 20% gross margin. Fastest way to get to that, go talk to your financial accounting people and ask, what is our average gross margin on a sale? Here we go. $40,000 in gross margin profit. I invested $10,000 in the exhibiting program. Now remember here, I'm backing exhibiting out because I'm looking for exhibiting ROI here. Therefore, I have a net exhibit profit of $30,000. How did I do? Well, $30,000 net, now again, that's gross margin, divided by a $10,000 investment, multiplied by 100, and I have a 300% gross margin ROI. Every dollar I invested brought $3 in gross margin revenue back to my company. You are generating a very solid ROI for your company. Okay, that's the hard dollar. Now, let me show you soft dollar, open this up for questions, and then we'll wind down. Here we go. Remember we said soft dollar is value received that you can express in numeric terms. You can quantify it or express it. So here we go. $10,000 investment in the show, 50 interactions. My cost per interaction is $200. I need to compare that to something. If I can't track what the average cost of a field sales call for my company is, I'm going to use the North American benchmark of 596. Now, I am going to deduct my cost per interaction at the show of 200. I have saved my company $396 per face-to-face -face interaction. When I multiply that by the 50 interactions, look what I have for my company almost $20,000 in soft dollar return on investment. Now again, this is not money I can put in the bank, but it is value we receive that I can quantify or express in numeric terms. I have had clients collect bonuses for being able to show soft dollar ROI because their company has bonus structures that reward measured cost reductions and savings for the company simply by measuring soft dollar ROI. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle here is to put together what I like to call an exhibiting performance and an ROI report. This should be a standard template type Word doc with some charts, some spreadsheets, some photographs that has 13 sections, if you will. It's got general info about the show. It's got a list of your exhibiting objectives by department and the progress that you've made. 
It'll bring in your metrics here of your interaction, cost for all, all that. It'll talk leads. It'll talk your pre and app marketing, PR, exhibit design, what you did for demonstration, right down the line, all 13. And this is not a book, okay? Uh, these are paragraphs. And you know, you could have this entire thing done in many cases in about a four page report. And what an incredible tool, what a useful tool to be able to capture the event, present it to your team, your senior management, and Paragraph 13 might be the most important one. What did we learn as a result? And what are we going to do to improve at our next show? Okay, so this is the genesis, the end game of setting up a measurement and reporting system. Okay, so we have covered a lot of ground in a very short period here. I'm sure that some of your heads are swimming and saying, whoa, that was a lot of content. Uh, I'm trying to honor your time, and I know there's different skill, skill levels. Uh, this webinar was recorded and will be uploaded next week. Uh, you should have your workbook, and hopefully you've interacted with this content. Uh, so let me take a look in the question queue as we begin to wind this down. Okay, first question. Can we get the PowerPoint after it's done? I uh, can't send you the PowerPoint, but we will upload the entire presentation on the NAA Resource Center. You don't have to listen to it end to end. You can drag uh, the thing and view it as fast as you want. You can jump from slide to slide to slide. Question, should the goals be different for each show or the same for all shows? Uh, that depends on how many shows, what type of shows. I would say that you want to start with an annual set of exhibiting goals that, that, that cross all shows, and then you want to scale those down for each individual show. So I would say, yes, they could be different. Start with an annual set of goals, scale them down for the different uh, shows. Um, what would be a good example of a smart goal for creating preference? Well, we, well you've got to think that one through, okay? You've got to say, okay, so if we're trying to know, did the exhibit experience build preference, you would probably need to do a exit survey of booth visitors asking them, based on your experience in the exhibit, um, how likely are you to recommend or purchase this product compared to, and you might list the top two or three competitors, to see if the exhibit experience moved. So the, so the goal might be to, in, uh, to increase uh, booth visitor preference by five percentage points and then begin tracking this from a show to show and year to year basis. And now you can show that your exhibit program is b building preference. Uh, let's see, somebody asked the question, uh, for cost per interaction, you said exhibit only. Why aren't interactions outside of the exhibit hall included? They could be if you want to. You could say any interaction any, anywhere around the show. But here's the thing. I'd like you to optimize your ROI from the exhibit, and anything that happens outside of the exhibit is like the icing on the cakes. Okay, next question. Where did I get the number 50 for the interactions on uh, page 8? I was using the example, and it was only an example of an exhibit interaction capacity, where we had 8.75 hours two booth staffers, and four interactions per hour per staffer. I hope that helps. Um, would the calculations of ROI be different for monthly recurring revenue? In that case, Caitlin, you would want to take a look at either the annual value or the lifetime value of a customer. See, because you can drive your, your sales revenue either on the, the uh, now if you only have a one-time sale, it's going to be easier. But if it's an uh, ongoing monthly, then you might say the average customer uh, spends $400 a month with us on average for 2.4 years, and that would give you the potential value of um, how to assign ROI to a customer. Okay? Uh, we're a small uh, company. Startup funds are tight. What type of pre-show marketing? Number one, I would suggest you look at anything and everything NAA makes available. There are complimentary opportunities. There are low-budget things. Beyond that, I would suggest that you um, invest in direct marketing in terms of direct mail. You can get postcards out the door for a dollar a card. Uh, email would be low cost. Telephone, mail, email, telephone together is a lethal one, two, three punch. So. Um, 
that's all I've got for questions. And boy, thank you so thank you so much here um, for logging in, everybody. Uh, I do see one more question is flashed. I want to take it. It says, "How do you separate interactions from leads?" Uh, I would suggest that you view the uh, webcast on on lead management. Um, a interaction is not a lead. They're two different things. And interaction means we spoke with somebody. Uh, a lead means we captured information and the visitor agreed to take a next step that was pointing toward rev revenue for our company. Okay, so there's a big difference between interactions and leads and uh, I would suggest that you take a look at the webcast. So we're out of time everybody. I wish I had more time. I want to thank you for logging in. I want to thank everyone at the National Apartment Association for caring enough about us as exhibitors to invest in this. Uh, be sure to use what you learn. Be sure to visit the Resource Center because if you will, I can close this webinar not by w wishing you a better show. I guarantee you will get a lot more from the time and money that you're investing in trade shows. So thanks for logging in, everybody.